Microbial electrolysis cells, MECs, have emerged as an innovative approach in the pursuit of low-cost green hydrogen, promising to make hydrogen production more affordable and sustainable. Unlike traditional electrolysis, which relies on a significant energy input to split water into hydrogen and oxygen, MX employs specialized microorganisms to produce hydrogen from organic waste with far less energy. This approach not only has the potential to reduce the cost of hydrogen production, but also offers a sustainable solution by utilizing wastewater and other biodegradable materials as a resource. Given this potential, it's worth exploring how close we are to realizing the commercial viability of MX for large-scale green hydrogen production. At the core of MEK technology is a group of unique microorganisms known as electrogens. These bacteria are capable of transferring electrons to an electrode while breaking down organic matter, making them ideal for MEC applications. When organic materials such as food waste or wastewater are introduced into an MEC, the bacteria consume these substances and produce electrons as a byproduct. By applying a small external voltage, far lower than what traditional electrolysis requires, MX drive the electrochemical reactions necessary to split water molecules and produce hydrogen gas. The process has several compelling advantages. Because it utilizes organic waste as a feedstock, MEC technology aligns with circular economy principles, reducing waste while generating a valuable energy source. Additionally, since MECs only require a minimal input of external electricity, they are significantly more energy efficient than conventional electrolysis, making them a strong candidate for low-cost green hydrogen production. One of the main challenges associated with conventional electrolysis is its high energy demand. It typically requires electricity from renewable sources, like wind or solar, to produce hydrogen sustainably, which can be costly and limits scalability in regions with limited renewable infrastructure. MECs, in contrast, require much lower energy input thanks to the microbial processes that provide the bulk of the energy needed to drive hydrogen production. For instance, a typical electrolysis setup may consume around 4.55.0 kilohours per cubic meter of hydrogen produced. MECs, however, often operate with closer to 1 kilowatt per cubic meter of hydrogen, representing a substantial reduction in energy consumption that directly impacts production costs. Additionally, using wastewater or other readily available organic materials further reduces costs, positioning MECs as a promising alternative for decentralized hydrogen production systems. Recent advancements have significantly advanced the potential of MEC technology. One such area of progress is microbial community engineering. Researchers have been working to identify and optimize the bacterial communities that operate most efficiently within MECs. By selecting and even genetically modifying bacteria with high electron transfer capabilities, scientists have been able to achieve improved hydrogen yields and faster reaction times. For instance, bacteria like Geobacter and Shiwanella are particularly effective in MEC environments, and efforts to enrich and engineer these microbial populations are ongoing. Another critical advancement involves electrode materials, which play a central role in MEC efficiency by facilitating microbial activity and electron transfer. Traditional electrode materials can be costly and often have limited efficiency, so recent research has focused on carbon-based electrodes, like graphene and carbon nanotubes. These materials offer high conductivity and larger surface areas, promoting microbial activity and improving electron transfer efficiency. With better durability and efficiency, these materials make MX more practical for long-term use pushing the technology closer to commercial viability. Researchers are also refining system design to reduce energy loss and enhance hydrogen collection efficiency. For example, improving the separation between the anode and cathode chambers can prevent reactions that consume hydrogen, enhancing the overall yield. Advances in membrane technology are allowing for more selective ion exchange between the chambers, which further boosts efficiency by preventing cross-contamination between products. In terms of energy sourcing, some pilot projects have successfully integrated MX with renewable energy sources like solar or wind power. By using renewable energy to supply the small voltage required for MEC operation, the process becomes even more sustainable and cost-effective. This hybrid approach could offer a decentralized, scalable solution for producing green hydrogen in areas with available renewable energy, but where traditional electrolysis is too costly. Pilot projects around the world are currently testing the feasibility of MECs for green hydrogen production, and wastewater treatment plants are proving to be ideal settings for this technology. These plants provide a continuous source of organic material in the form of wastewater, which MX can use as feedstock to produce hydrogen while simultaneously cleaning the wastewater. This dual functionality makes for an economically attractive model where the cost savings from wastewater treatment help offset hydrogen production costs. 
For example, a pilot project in the Netherlands is using MEC technology to treat municipal wastewater while producing hydrogen as a byproduct. Early results from this project are promising, showing competitive hydrogen yields at a fraction of the energy cost required by traditional electrolysis. Similar projects in the United States and South Korea are exploring the scalability of MX systems to meet local hydrogen demands, setting an example for other regions considering MEC technology for green hydrogen production. While MEC technology holds great promise, challenges remain before it can be widely adopted on a commercial scale. One of the primary issues is the difficulty of maintaining stable, high-yield microbial communities over extended periods, as even small changes in temperature, pH, or substrate composition can impact microbial performance and hydrogen output. Additionally, the cost of advanced materials like graphene or carbon nanotubes, though beneficial for efficiency, can increase initial costs. However, as material science progresses, and these materials become more affordable, MECs will likely become more viable for large-scale hydrogen production. Scaling up MEC technology will also require addressing logistical considerations, such as sourcing adequate and consistent supplies of organic waste and ensuring system efficiency comparable to other green hydrogen production methods. Regulatory frameworks for hydrogen production from organic waste are also evolving, which could influence the pace of MEC adoption in the energy sector. Despite these hurdles, the future of MECs in green hydrogen production remains promising, particularly for decentralized applications in areas with plentiful organic waste and available renewable energy. With continuous advancements in microbial engineering, electrode materials, and system optimization, MX are on a path to becoming a sustainable and cost-effective alternative for green hydrogen production within the coming decade. Ultimately, microbial electrolysis cells have the potential to transform the way we produce hydrogen offering a solution that not only generates renewable fuel, but also addresses waste management issues. As research advances and production costs decrease, MEECs could play a key role in the transition to a carbon-neutral economy. By providing an energy-efficient, waste-reducing approach to hydrogen production, MEECs could contribute significantly to building a cleaner and more sustainable energy future.